In this beginner-friendly tutorial, we'll combine watercolor and gouache to paint some mini florals perfect for summer. Our video today is sponsored by Birch Living. Welcome back my friends, my name is Shada Campbell and today we are painting mini gouache and watercolor florals, summer florals. I'm working with these tiny little pieces of handmade watercolor paper. They just make everything cuter. If you can find handmade paper, get it. I'll link stuff in the description. You need your watercolor paints, paper towel for blotting your brush, clean water, and we're going to use gouache today. And gouache, if you're not familiar, is a highly opaque water-based paint. It's very similar to watercolors. It's just super, super opaque. So it's wonderful for working and mixing into your watercolor painting practice. We'll talk more about it in a sec, but grab a couple paint brushes as well. I'm gonna do most of this with my smaller round brushes, like a number four round brush and maybe something larger like a number eight. It's like the same brushes I use all the time. Okay, let's get this going. I am going to begin by creating watercolor backgrounds for my painting and then the flowers themselves will paint in gouache. So grab that larger round brush. This is my number eight round and we're just going to wet some of the cakes of paint that we're going to use. I'm mixing a yellow first so I'm I'm wetting the Naples yellow and the raw sienna and the white and then I'm scrubbing at that cake of white paint with my wet brush and bringing all that good pigment over to my palette where I can mix in um, more color like Naples yellow. So I mixed white and Naples yellow to give me a nice light yellow. Then for the pink I want to mix a pink. I am mixing magenta with lots and lots of white and you can see me doing that here and then I kind of want it to be a little more peachy so I'm going to mix in a little jaune and brilliant as well and of course you could just mix in straight up orange or yellow get the same effect so let's start there I've got two pieces of my little um, handmade watercolor paper I'm going to start with the pink and we're going to paint a little oval and we are going very very perfectly imperfect here do not try to get it exact or perfectly balanced it doesn't even have to be in the very center of the paper just go for that really rough rustic look. <laughs> you can miss some little spots. That's totally fine. Then we're going to rinse our brush and we're going to do the same thing with the yellow. But uh, this time I'm just going to do like a little rectangle, kind of follow the shape of the paper. And I have this beautiful buttery yellow that is a mix of Naples yellow and white. And then I, I was going to do two, but I think actually, why don't we do three? We got the time. I got time for you guys. <laughs> and for the third one, I'm just going to pull over my watercolor paint so you can see what I'm doing. And what I'm doing is mixing French gray with lots of water. And then I will put a little violet in there as well because I want a nice warm gray, kind of a purpley gray. And then I am going to do the same thing using my large brush, nice watery paint. I'm just painting like a very perfectly imperfect rectangle and we can uh, just play around with that color a little bit and then we're going to let all three of those dry. We're going to mix up our gouache while we're waiting for the backdrops to dry and I am going to tell you a little bit about today's sponsor Birch Living. Birch is a premium mattress in a box company that makes mattresses and sleep products that are stylish, comfortable, and environmentally conscious. Their non-toxic mattresses are made in America with natural and organic materials that have been sustainably sourced. It's getting warmer really quickly here in Canada. I don't like to have a lot of AC on in the house, just not for me. And so I know the mattress, the breathability, and the natural materials are gonna help keep me cool while I'm sleeping this summer. Birch Lux, which is what I have here, takes the comfort, luxury, and safety of the original Birch mattress to the next level. They're crafted with eight different layers of organic cashmere, organic wool, organic cotton, and 100% natural latex. They're specially created with breathability, cooling, and support in mind. I ordered the Birch Lux mattress, a premium upgrade to their original well-loved Birch, and I've had it for a week and I love it. And not only is Birch a better mattress for me, they're committed to being better for the planet. I love that I can reduce my environmental impact by having a mattress that is produced with raw materials. Chris has allergies, so he has really been enjoying the fact that it's hypoallergenic. We've been falling asleep easily. All three of us, in fact, are having a wonderful night's sleep. 
And it was important for me to choose a mattress that's made with organic and natural materials because unlike synthetic mattresses, the wool in this mattress makes it hypoallergenic and it's both allergen and mildew resistant. And if it makes you nervous to buy something you haven't tried, with your Birch mattress you get a 100 night sleep trial along with a 25 year warranty. I love my Birch mattress and I think you will too. If you're looking for a new bed, check out Birch. You can click the link below or go to birchliving.com backslash Shada for $400 off your mattress plus two free pillows. So today I want to paint three summer flowers together, a little lupin, some forget-me-nots, and like a peony or a Maybe it's a rose, I don't know. <laughs> the colors we're going to use are magenta, pale blush, raw sienna. The pale blush turned out not to be as necessary. Um, I will say that. A little olive green, uh, white. I always use lots and lots of white. And then you'll need a blue. I used indigo and then I also dug around in here and I used a little bit of cobalt blue. I would say the cobalt was more important than the indigo. Nope, that's a lie. They were both important because I used the indigo to make purple. And that's actually what we're going to do first. The first one we're going to paint is our lupin. So I want to mix up my gouache. Gouache comes out of the tube, the consistency of toothpaste. And when it goes on your paper, you want it to be very watery. You want a soupy consistency. And I promise you, it will still be wonderfully opaque. So I'm mixing a purple, just mixing indigo and magenta and to lighten your purple you can mix white in there. I may have taken that a little far, I ended up mixing a little more blue and a little more magenta. So I had a nice medium purple. Keep on mixing water in, you want it to stay nice and watery. And what I did is just mix two purples. I've got a medium purple and then I mixed a little more indigo in and I have like a darker purple. And that's pretty much where we'll start with two shades of purple. Oh, and then you're going to want to mix a little water into your olive green. And then we're ready to start painting our little mini lupin. To paint the lupin, make sure to rinse your brush or even switch to a smaller brush like I've done here. This is a number four brush. And we are going to start with two thin lines, just these pretty little curving stems and then rinse that brush really well and pick up some of your purple paint. And this comes together really easily. We're going to paint all these little tiny sort of almond shaped purple marks. And we're going to go right over that green stem that we already painted. We're making these marks at the bottom of area of the stem and then we continue up allowing those little almond shapes, those brush marks to get a little bit smaller and a little bit closer together so that we form this really easy natural cone shape. And I might mix a little more white in so that those brush marks are a little lighter towards the top. Then I'm grabbing that darker purple and we're gonna do the same thing. Make these big teardrop or almond shaped brush marks all along the length of that stem, allowing them to get a little smaller, a little closer together up at the top of the stem. And it's a really easy way to paint a lupin. You're going to see it looks a little unfinished right now because it is, <laughs> but this is so easy. While we're waiting for those to dry, we're going to grab some green on our brush. And the leaves are literally just a couple holes of the brush across the paper. And you kind of want to just make a, a leaf that fans out like a star. So a leaf that's made up of all these little brush strokes. And I'm kind of putting some more stems and branches in there, just framing the flowers really nicely. And then we're going to mix a little white into that green. And we're just gonna do a little dotting right at the top to finish off that cone shape. And that's when they really start to look like a lupin. You can use that light green to add some more leaves in there, continue to frame your lupins. And gosh, that's about it. We can take this a little further by grabbing some light purple and kind of just put in some little dotting on top of our darker purple. That's just really gonna make this simple mini flower pop. And that's, that's really pretty much all there is to it. I'm gonna get real close so you can see what I mean by those the dotting with the, the lighter purple. Mine got a little messy, frankly, and it still looked fine. <laughs> so that's done. Let's set that aside. And we're going to grab our pink oval. And the next one up is the forget-me-not, one of my favorite summer flowers. My mom was just here at our new home working on our garden, pretty much because I refused to do it and also because she loves it. <laughs> and she brought a whole bunch of forget-me-nots over. So we're gonna have beautiful forget-me-nots next summer if I water it. She said, 
water the garden. I was like, that's a lot of responsibility. I don't know. We'll see how it goes. Anyway, I'm taking a light blue and what we're going to do is paint a cluster of these really simple four and five petal flowers. The nice thing here is that they're so, so simple, but when you paint them in a nice cluster, all tightly gathered together, it starts to create a flower that looks really detailed and looks really sophisticated. So that's all I'm doing here, painting a bunch of these tiny little four four five petal flowers. Some might be just three petals, kind of makes them look like they're on a bit of an angle and cluster them quite tightly, right in the center of that oval. Then we rinse our brush, we grab a little bit of that olive green and we're going to start painting in these little thin curving stems that all kind of meet bottom center. And from there, you can start adding a little extra pressure to that brush and creating some leaf shapes. The bottom I kind of go a little larger as I go up towards the flowers and the top of my page I get a little smaller and let those leaves get a little smaller and just like the lupins they frame them really nicely. With that done we're going to mix a little bit of white and raw sienna together and don't forget to put water in there too I didn't show that very clearly but you want a nice liquid consistency and then we're just putting a dot of yellow at the center of each flower and at first mine was a little light I mixed some more raw sienna in there got a nice rich yellow and I think that made the forget me not really pop and look really pretty on the pink backdrop. Okay, she's all done. We've got one more to go. I've got my gray paper here, gonna flip that around. And I think I'll paint a white, I don't know if this is a peony or a rose, just a nice big open flower. Let's call it an English rose with that big stamen in the middle, that big yellow stamen. I mixed a little bit of that blush pink into my white, but you'll see the color is so delicate that it actually doesn't really pop off that gray. So I recommend just using white. Um, and I kind of just painted a circle or a little oval even that's made up of all these just brush marks really. Let's do another one. A circle made up of a bunch of messy brush marks gives us the, the form for our two flowers. We'll let that dry and just like we did for the others, I'm taking olive green on my clean small round brush and I am just adding some curving stems that kind of join at the bottom center and then we're pulling that brush across the page allowing some nice organic shapes to emerge and we're calling those shapes leaves. Just leave it alone, make a leaf shape. My page also was like going all over the desk. I should have taped it down, especially if your paper is curving or curling, you're gonna wanna tape it down and you can use washi tape for that and it will come off when you're done. Continue to frame these white flowers with lots of little leaves. You can have the tops of a leaf sort of peeking out from behind and that will make the white flower really show up and pop off that gray backdrop as well. Uh, I went overboard with my leaves, but I was having fun with it. <laughs> and then I took a little bit of raw sienna on the end of my brush and just did some lines and dots. That uh, gives the look of the stamen at the center of the flower. I added a little raw sienna to my olive green and mixed a lighter green gouache. Again, still put lots of water in there. And I just put a, like a hint of light green on some of those leaves. And then I went in with a nice bright white, a true white, and we just kind of went over the flower again because really the peachy white just wasn't showing up on that gray. And that was it. That is all done. And there you have it, three mini summer flowers in watercolor and gouache. I think my favorite is the lupin. It's so fun and simple to paint. I'm really enjoying incorporating gouache into my watercolor painting and I would love to know your thoughts on that. So comment below. Please hit the subscribe button. It makes such a huge difference to me and to this business. And I will see you soon with a new tutorial.